we, we fell in love with the idea of creating followers. Really? We fell in love with the church walls. Okay. If I was to ask you who started science, it wasn't Nietzsche or... No, it's it was God. the church. It's the church. It was actually the church. <laughs> Individuals that are not starting businesses anymore, we rather start church buildings than businesses. When I am in a pastoral conference, mm -hmm. I'm usually the youngest one of them, and when they ask me to talk, they get mad. <laughs> because I tell them. Hi, welcome to Mirror. There's something that we are noticing lately. More and more Christians are leaving the Christian faith, and especially young people are leaving the church. So today, we are going to try to find out why is that. Hi, Festivals, how are you? I am doing well, hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank welcome. you for having me, yes, thank you. Yes, definitely, welcome, welcome. So can you tell us about yourself? Sure. First and foremost, I am Pastor Bullis Gago. Mm -hmm. I'm a youth pastor. They call me youth pastor because I speak to a lot of young people mm -hmm. mostly, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, have an organization called RefCon Movement, Revolution mm -hmm. Convention. Okay. Uh, it's all about reintroducing Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I run a church. Okay. Uh, it's called Finger of God Good News Ministry Valley. Long name. Yes. Oh. FGGM Valley. <laughs> yes. For sure. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, by profession, I am a biologist. Mm -hmm. uh, got called into the ministry. Mm -hmm. Got my master's in theology, uh, biblical studies, and uh, now um, tail end of my doctoral degree uh, okay. in uh, religion, psychology of religion, um, neurotheology, in that line. So wow. I'm very analytical with a lot of things, okay. but foremost, it's my love of Jesus that drives me. So. Wow, that's great. That's a great background right oh, thank there. You. Thank, <laughs> you. thank you, thank you. So we've noticed that there's something going on. It's going on, it's quietly, but it's mm. gradually. Mm. More and more Christians are living the Christian faith. Mm. Why mm. is that? That's a very good question, mm -hmm. right? Uh, how much time do we have? Because <laughs> uh, that's a deep question, yeah. right? Um, I, I, being that I deal with a lot of young individuals, mm -hmm. I would even, just to, just to put a category on this, because if we're to talk about the whole body of Christ, mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to be here forever, mm -hmm. right? Because it's multifaceted. Yeah. With a lot of young people, if I'm not mistaken, the statistic is somewhere around 59% of all millennials are leaving the church. Yeah. Uh, as of 2017, I believe it was about 66% um, to 70% of everyone between the age of 18 and 25 wow. is leaving the church. Mm. Uh, and if when we sit them down to talk to them, uh, we're fortunate enough to hear what their what their real reasons mm -hmm. are, and they're legitimate reasons per se. Okay. They're legitimate and. Let me preface this by saying, uh, as a pastor, uh uh, or as, as a Christian, it's mm -hmm. easy with questions like this to give a generic answer, such mm. as the Bible said in the last days people would be lovers of themselves. That's right. Gonna leave. That's what I, I was thinking about. Right. <laughs> and I, I don't think we're there yet, actually. Oh, wow. Because when you look at the numbers of individuals still searching for truth, mm -hmm. it doesn't match up yet to that prophecy. Okay. In the sense that there are legitimate young people, as I meet them on a daily basis, looking for what is true. Mm -hmm. And their whole gravitation to the church is the search for that truth. Okay. Now, uh, we could debate of whether their motives are right or wrong mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Uh, that is, as a pastor, I have decided, instead of blaming someone else, I've looked into the Christian faith hard enough to say that we have a lot of work to do first okay. before we can even accuse them of being empathetic or they don't want the truth and sadness, right? So what are the things that we see? Let me give you one example of the disparity between the church and the youth. Mm -hmm. The church uh, is known more for what we stand against than what we stand for. Okay. When you ask a lot of young people, they know what we stand against, premarital sex, homosexuality. Mm. Ask them, what is it that they stand for? Oh, Explain it. I see. There is no explanation. I see. They, they don't even know where to grasp it. They understand the, the, the verbiage. Yeah, Jesus Christ died and rose again mm -hmm. and all of that. And this is how we're supposed to live in righteous and all. Ask the why. They don't understand why. Mm. 
This is because they feel disconnected from what's going on in church. Because the experience is, this is a research I saw that said that the church was 15 years behind. Wow. In technology, in experiences, the, the average age of a pastor, mm -hmm. so much so, it, there is a disconnect with what young people are going through today where our iPhones and our phones mm -hmm. are coming out every six months and our experiences are so different that the examples we're getting from the pulpit, they don't feel like it is relevant. Wow. So why is there a disconnect or why are they leaving? It's because they're still searching for truth. Okay. But the church doesn't seem to be able to catch up to captivate their attention because the truth about it is, as time is going, attention spans are shortening. Mm. And the question is, how do we relate the gospel of Jesus Christ in the 21st century in a way mm. that captivates the minds, the brains that were shaped mm -hmm. by the 21st century? Wow. I'm glad you said that because my next question was that, you know, people say we need to do things a certain way, yeah. but when they say a certain way, they look at the they look at the world. Absolutely, because there's so much in the world that right. actually attracts young people. Yes, ma'am. So does that mean that that's what the church needs to do? No, no. Okay. Um, you see, uh, another question I usually get every time I give this explanation of you know the church is not really living up to par. Mm -hmm. It's this idea of are you trying to say the Holy Spirit is not working? Oh. No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, what I am saying is that the Holy Spirit uses human beings with a human mind. Okay. I am not saying that what we need to do is to incorporate a, the worldly way of doing things into the Christian faith. Okay. But let me throw something back at you. If I was to ask you who started science, it wasn't Nietzsche or... No, it's it was God. the church. It's the church. It was actually the church. <laughs> the church actually started science. You know why? Uh -huh. Because of the Bible verse that actually said, Paul said, if you look into nature, you mm -hmm. would see the existence of oh, God. God. Sci the church, literally, I'm not even talking about maybe metaphorically. No, mm -hmm. they came together mm -hmm. and said, we're going to start studying nature. Oh. And what happened is along the way, mm -hmm. we lost track of that. We stopped fueling that. The world came in and saw it was a good thing. They took it and ran with it, and I we see. are left without science. I so see. now here the church all freaking out all the time. Oh, science. Ah! No. Wow. If we held on to it, do you know where we could have been by now? I know. Wow. And so the ideology is this. We can be trendsetters. Mm -hmm. We can. We don't need to go back into the world and figure out what's been done because mm -hmm. what is being done, happening has already been done. Mm -hmm. We need to sit down. What we're lacking in the Christian faith right now, and I am not absolving the world of responsibility. Mm -hmm. People are turning down the truth as well. Yes. But I'm talking from a Christian perspective and taking responsibility. Yes. I am saying that what we're lacking the most in the Christian faith are brainstormers. Individuals that are not starting businesses anymore, we rather start church buildings than businesses. <laughs> we rather start, we rather have an organization of people that think like us than being able to brainstorm and say, I'm looking into the world, what does the world need most? What app do we need the most? What causes us to be more united as one people? It is stuff like this, when the world can see that we're not simple-minded people mm -hmm. that just don't think, that want to hold on to faith and religion because it is the best means of control and finances. Mm. If they can actually see that we have a mind on our shoulder and there's a reason for which Paul says it, and, and, and I believe it is 1 Peter mm -hmm. 3.15. Give when you are asked, he says, sanctify Jesus in your heart. And when you are asked why you believe, he said, don't, he didn't say give a spiritual answer. He said, give an answer, a reasoning mm -hmm. for why you believe. What that means is sit down, look at them and tell them word for word why you believe. Mm. We're not doing that anymore. And wow. that's why we're losing them. Well, I know a friend who will definitely agree with you. So if, in other words, if I'm hearing clearing, it's, it's that the church has to lead. We the have church, to lead. But the church is not leading. We, we, we stopped leading. Okay. We stopped leading mm -hmm. after Billy Graham. That's what happened. Really? Why? Because we got enamored with power. We got what? We got enamored. We okay. fell in love with how it looks to be mm. worshipped. Or we, 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 we fell in love with the idea of creating followers. Really? We fell in love with the church walls. Okay. We, we lost our drive. The, 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 the commission God gave was go into the world. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. What we've decided to do is to go into the world mm -hmm. and gather those that already think like us. Okay. And so what's happening here is that 
unless we learn to set the temperature, mm -hmm. we're outdated. Okay. So the way the church was designed to work is to be ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. Jesus was entirely ahead of his time. Mm. And so the whole, what, what causes us to be attractive is when we can look into the world and we have our Bible prophesies mm -hmm. things we're seeing today. Wow. Yes. How much ahead do we need to be? That's the thing. Right. If we can just hold on to what is already even written, mm -hmm. we're ahead of the game. Okay. But we're not even doing that. We rather focus on, I just heard a pastor say during the COVID virus, he just bought his second jet. How? It's not wrong <laughs> if he needs a jet to fly. But how? But hold on. <laughs> that means you must have been able to somehow collect enough, I don't know. I don't during the off, pandemic. I don't want to say it. Yeah. Right? But I don't know how he made his money. Wow. But during the pandemic, when people are losing their jobs mm -hmm. and the, the, the whole religion is about love and taking care of the widows and the sick mm -hmm. and people are out of jobs and you're bragging about a jet. Hmm. You know, Pastor, I hear you. So all of this is a lot of theory, but the practical <laughs> way, though, like uh, how do we I'll do to stop like the having those young people leave church? Like I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But it's like, what would you tell this pastor? What is it that we need to do practically? What we practically need to do is go back to God. Okay. I we, agree. We say it. Mm -hmm. We say it. Mm -hmm. If I, when I am in a pastoral conference, mm -hmm. I'm usually the youngest one of them. And when they ask me to talk, they get mad. <laughs> because I tell them. I, be, I, used to, I honestly believe every pastor mm -hmm. needs to be a person that studies, mm -hmm. not just the Bible, mm -hmm. but society. Society. To understand we society. We need to understand society. Yes. You need to understand the times. To relate to them. To relate, man. Mm -hmm. I would tell pastors to stop thinking about numbers because if you read the Bible, mm -hmm. Jesus never did anything to be famous. I, I preached the, the, today and I showed the congregation a, a, a verse that said that the more people knew about Jesus mm -hmm. and his fame increased, mm -hmm. the Bible literally says he often withdrew to go pray. Mm. Pastors are not praying anymore. We are, if there's any research going on, it's how I need to make my church larger. <laughs> if there's anything research being done, mm -hmm. it's how do I even become more cool? Wow. Pastors, if you read your Bible correctly, mm -hmm. were never so far removed from the people. Mm. We need to get back into a relationship with people. Yes. Where they know me, they know me by my first name. Mm. You can be a member of church pastor, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But you need to be able to be so relatable that that love, I, I tell people this, if you read the Bible, the only reason why we have spiritual gifts mm -hmm. is so that the love of God can be felt. Yes. The minute Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, you take love, love away, out. Yeah. your noise. That's we true. have noise. That's so true. what I'll tell pastors is this, Go back to studying. You need to pray more mm -hmm. than you preach. Mm -hmm. You need to read your word mm -hmm. and you need to go back and make friends that are not pastors. Mm. And then remove the titles sometimes. Because it's all about the titles. Like Bishop, Honestly, Archbishop. Honestly, I am Bullis Gago. <laughs> the only reason why I threw pastor at you is because we're doing a video. Yeah. I guess it'll be nice to know that it's a pastor talking from That's a pastoral right. perspective. Because I knew that if I was going to talk about the youth, I had to talk as a pastor to yes. pastors. Yeah, because the young people can't relate anymore because they see all those pastors being so uh, three times saints. You know, they see them in, on pedestals and they feel like, wow, <laughs> when am I going to ever become like this? Sister, let me even say something to what you just said. I honestly, I, I mean this with all my heart and it hurts me to say this. Mm -hmm. I don't even think they see as a saint anymore. <laughs> I think what they see is I don't want to relate or I don't need to go because that's hypocrisy. I think that's what we're at now. I don't even think it's, am I ever going to rise to that level? Mm -hmm. I honestly believe where young people are today is I don't even want to be in the same neighborhood with them. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe that's where we are right now. Wow. It's, it's because we have left a bitter taste. I'm a pastor talking. This thing's hurt me. I'm not, I'm not tearing pastors down. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not also just baiting people that are listening to me. Mm -hmm. I mean this. I, I lose sleep over this at night. Wow. I do. Ask my wife. Yeah. I, I sit down and I honestly, this is transparency. Mm -hmm. I asked my wife, should I quit? Hmm. I asked her because I felt the work was so much that it gets so heavy on me that I, sometimes I tell my wife, I, I don't even feel like I'm impactful. And it feels like you're the only one thinking this way. 
Like who else really thinks I've been like attacked you? for saying these things? Yes, I can I can imagine. I'm thinking your 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 video might be attacked for <laughs> this. Because I, and, and, and again, let me say this. Each person has responsibility. Mm -hmm. I know young people that come, they don't care, they come to church, do whatever they want, they leave. Mm -hmm. You're here busting your head open to preach the gospel, it just never reaches. Mm -hmm. I know those exist. Mm -hmm. But but let me ask you a question, Deborah. This is this is where this is why I blame us still. Mm -hmm. I feel like before I can point a finger to the world and say it's the world's fault, at least let us cover our bases. And so let me ask you this question. Well, now it's a reversing. It's a rhetorical question. I'll answer it. Don't worry. If I was to ask you to name five prophets that you know that are true prophets of God. In the Bible? No, no. Right now. Oh. Where you can actually walk up to them and they can tell you exactly word of knowledge, word for word, what God just said. How many would you say? Yeah. Rhetorical. I don't know. When you open your Bible, Paul mm -hmm. wrote to the churches, for example, in Corinthians mm -hmm. or in, in the Corinth or the, wherever, mm -hmm. yelling at them, telling them to prophesy one at a time because the prophecies were too much. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that means? The way the Bible oriented church, mm -hmm. the gifts of the Spirit were supposed to be everywhere. Why? Mm -hmm. Because, like the Bible says, young women should look up to uh, uh, older, older women, women or young yes. men should look. Why? Because if you don't have a great cloud of witness, how do you expect the young people to see the example of what Christ looks like? That's right. How? That's right. So why won't they leave? Because you would walk into a church, you don't even know what the pastor's about. You, there's no prophet, there's no evangelist, mm -hmm. there's, it's just the pastor and his own image, and it's all about personalities now. I'm curious to know when you were younger, yeah. meaning in your teens, yeah. did you see all of that too? It, and with that, I or that perspective? I how, was, how was the church experience to you when you were younger? I was born this way. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I still want to, in my spirit, I feel like we got, I got to talk about that practicality. Mm -hmm. But growing up, I was weird because growing up, my eyes was always open. Okay. I was sensitive mm -hmm. to what people preached and what they did. One of the greatest victories in my life that I thank God for mm -hmm. is my father. Okay. My father lived what he preached. But how? Mm -hmm. Not because I saw him stand on the altar. When I woke up at 6 a.m. to get ready for school, the first sight I saw across my room was my dad at the table since 5 a.m. reading his Bible. When he comes out of there, I'm watching his every actions, what he tells me he read. He shared it with me. Mm. Then I watched him throughout the whole day, try to live it. Mm. And then I saw how he treated my mom. Mm. Mm. How he treated my mom. I'm getting emotional, so Aww. we gotta stop. Caused me to realize that it was possible. Mm -hmm. My dad wakes up every Saturday to do the laundry at home. He says my mom will never touch laundry as long as he lives. Wow. An African man? African man. Nigerian. Come on. I promise you. That's how I like I that. That's how I grew up. I like that. I watched my father catch this, be Jesus. Hmm. People don't get it. When the Bible says we become Christ-like, the only way the world would want to be like Jesus or want Jesus mm -hmm. is when they see Jesus in action. In us, we, yes. I saw my dad. So how did I get to have this mentality? I saw it work. Wow. And then when I see my dad and see the church, I say, no, mm. no, no. You had a good example. I had, to I had too much of a good example. That's right. How do I know how much God loves? My dad, I, I, I was ROTC, right? Mm -hmm. Military, you know? You had to get this stripe on your pants when you get promoted. Mm -hmm. One day, all I got promoted, and I was supposed to be the drill team commander the next day. Mm -hmm. By 5 p.m., all the sewing places, dry cleaners are closed. No one's going to do it for me overnight. Mm -hmm. I put my pants there with the red stripe, and I said, I guess I'm not going to go tomorrow. Right? Mm -hmm. My dad is working hard because my dad was a lawyer, but then now he's a pastor, so mm -hmm. he was on the computer working. Mm -hmm. My dad just says, leave it there. I don't know. Maybe in the morning we'll figure something out. I wake up in the morning, my dad spent eight hours with a needle in his hand sewing my pants. Wow. Hmm. You want to tell me a man can do that and I wouldn't know the love of God? Like, I saw my dad live Christ. 
for my mom, me, all of us. Mm -hmm. And then he tells me that's how Jesus looks like. I look at the church and I go, we are far. This yeah. is where the mentality came from. How do we become practical again as pastors? How mm -hmm. do we get these young people to come in? It's easy. It's the way it's always been done. Mm -hmm. That's a good advice for the pastors yeah. also. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And I tell every young pe person this. Listen. We always have this uh, cliche, church is a hospital. It is. It is. <laughs> oh, full of imperfect people. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know the pastor should be a better example. But I want to tell every young person, don't give up on the truth or at least searching for the truth. Yes. Because what happens is, as much as you think you're the one searching for the truth, the, the truth is searching for you. Mm. God is out there looking for you. Mm -hmm. And one day he will find a way to get to you the way that he messes you the most. You're not looking for it. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit will prick your heart at the right time. You just have to be ready. Yeah. And so don't judge Christ based on what the church is doing. Amen. That's what I was going to say also, because a lot of young people, they take advantage of the, that fact yeah. to not want to follow Christ because. or not go to church because yeah. of so and so. Yeah. But I mean, salvation is individual, right? It's individual. Yeah. It's individual. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and I, I want to submit to every young person that this Jesus that we serve, mm -hmm. if he is real enough and you want to encounter him, if you've encountered him, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And what this means is, I promise you on encountering and surrendering yourself to him. Mm -hmm. You'll be glad you did, even though we, the church, act this way. You'll be glad you did because the way we act is no excuse. Because uh, I love what this evangelist once said. You never judge a religion by mm -hmm. its abuse mm -hmm. because you will always find it. That's if it's right. truth you're searching for. And Jesus makes himself available. You have an individualistic responsibility to respond to him, mm -hmm. irrespective of how everybody is. In fact, in our day today, we love being activists, don't we? Mm -hmm. It should even encourage you the most to accept, to accept the Jesus, mm -hmm. to, to go back to fix the church. How about that? And that's what Martin Luther did. <clears throat> that's what he did. Mm -hmm. Every person <clears throat> that's in the history books of Christian was never loved. Was always the out one voice that was out. Mm -hmm. But like John the Baptist, they stood there and they spoke. And so practicality, again, is we need to go back to studying. Every young person needs to go back to the truth, searching at the, dry, at the, at the board. Mm -hmm. Look into who Jesus Christ is mm -hmm. and look into the evidence for his resurrection. Look into <clears throat> what he does, not just how he makes you feel, mm -hmm. but what are his claims. Because if Jesus was not true, mm -hmm. he was the most destructive person in history. So now, and so we need to look into that. Yeah, so you spoke to, you gave an advice for the pastors. We're going to do something a little bit different sure. today. I want you to look at the camera and talk to that young person. Yeah. That youth who maybe just gave up on church, yeah. gave up on Christ, gave up yeah. on God because of what pastor so-and-so did. Tell him something and then maybe you can lead them to receive Christ as sure. well. Sure, yeah. why not? I'll try my best now. Every person that has ever existed mm -hmm. has a set of questions. What is the origin to life? What happens after life? Mm -hmm. Who is the truth? What's the meaning of life? Mm -hmm. What's purpose? These questions are inherent and placed literally by mm -hmm. God. And <clears throat> every child, when, before you start thinking, you start asking yourself those questions. And, when you look around into religion per se, there's a lot of options. Mm -hmm. Some religions say, you know what, uh, there is no God. Mm -hmm. Some religions say, you know what, there, <clears throat> there's no purpose to life except what God wills. Christianity has a, sense, a set of claims. I would like to submit, and I'm talking to the scholar in every person. I would like to submit, I've studied, uh, the, 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 I've studied literally almost every religion that is titled religion. Uh, and that's because my studies, my doctoral studies, required me to. Uh, every religion makes a claim. You want to believe what is the most coherent, non-contradictive mm -hmm. claims that attack the nature of an individual and causes you to see where you could find the truth because Christianity is one of the only religions that tells you not to believe just because it told you. Mm -hmm. It tells you to believe it because you put it to the test and it works. Mm -hmm. The only belief system ever. 
And if you find that you are resistant to it arguing, I can tell you you never tried it the right way. The right way. Let me clarify that. The right way. And so what I'm telling you to do is to put Jesus to the test. I'm actually telling you to do that. I'm telling you to say, you know what? This, this, this black guy calling himself a pastor said something about Jesus. I want to put it to a test. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. So give your life to him. Surrender to him. And I'm not just telling you to obey blind words in the scripture. <laughs> I'm asking you to pick it up. If he says God is good. If the Bible says the wages of sin is death. If he says that he loved us while we were yet sinners. What's the evidence to that? Put it to the test. Mm-hmm. I was sharing my testimony. I gave my life to the Lord in the bed of suicide. I, told, I tell people that I was sexually assaulted at a young age. I had saw dead bodies. I was almost burnt in a church alive. I, I saw uh, racism at its highest. I, I, it, 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 life has happened to me constantly enough for me to doubt God's existence in itself. But the only way I can reconcile all of these things and get a coherent answer to every existential question I have ever asked, the only coherent answer I can get is in the name of Jesus. Amen. Personally, mm-hmm. I have not found atheism itself. For example, if your goal is to say, well, Christianity seems too exclusive. Every religion must be good. They must be good in all things. By the way, I don't know if you know this. If you've studied any idea, ideology of religion, anything of organized or le- even spirituality against organized religion, every single ideology is exclusive. Every one of them. Even the religions that say it's not exclusive excludes those that are exclusive. Therefore, it is exclusive. (laughs) So no one is independent of having to make a decision. Even atheism is a choice and it's a belief. Trust me, it's harder to be an atheist than a Christian. Wow. It really is. I I could prove it to you anyhow possible because the things that you have to believe such as all things came into existence through quantum fluctuations. It's a belief system that I as a scientist cannot, I can't even fathom how you can believe that. Hmm. So if we're going to talk about Jesus, I want, and I'm not belittling your experiences. I'm just telling you that I can, I gave Jesus a try and I can't go back because I've experienced the love of God, the truth of God. And I, I, I gave it to God. I gave myself and I've never regretted it. So, like the moderator just asked me to do, I would like to pray with you. And I'm just going to say a quick prayer. Mm-hmm. If you could, you could pray with me, I just want to pray with you that the Holy Spirit will probe your heart. Mm-hmm. And if you actually pray with me, I want you to find a mentor, find a church mm-hmm. that actually, and I believe you put a link down mm-hmm. there, or mm-hmm. at your church per mm-hmm. se, where the Word of God is actually te- taught and mm-hmm. where you could be disciple. Mm-hmm. Or if you have more questions at our church, Every third, every fourth service, I stop any set of sermon and I just answer questions mm-hmm. about any questions people have. You can send questions at me and I will answer them. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to pray. And if that is you, reach out to us mm-hmm. and let us know because I just don't want to lead you in a prayer and just make you think it's all good now. Mm-hmm. I want you to find a place to be discipled yes. so it, it does get good. Yes. My Heavenly Father, I ask you right now as I pray, Father, for anyone listening to me. Mm-hmm. If you are doing anything in the heart of anyone at all, I can't reach everyone. In fact, there are people that might disagree with everything I said. That's fine. I believe it. But I ask for those that are even giving it any sense of consideration, Mm -hmm. that your spirit will prick their heart and that they will go searching after the truth. Mm -hmm. Not as just truth seekers, but they're truly seeking after Jesus. Mm -hmm. But help them to realize that even the the ability to even seek after him is the Holy Spirit working in their heart because you want them as they are. Yes. So Father, I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, if I sounded judgmental at all, forgive me. That was not my intention, but I'm asking for the person that wants to know you, that they will pray with me and say, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Be my Lord and personal Transform Savior. Transform me. Transform me. And reveal yourself to me. And reveal yourself to that me. That I will know you are the truth. That I will know that you are the truth. Irrespective. Irrespective. Of what religion does. Of what religion does. I want to know you as God. I want to know you as God. In Jesus' name. I In pray. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, it's Pastor. It's a pleasure. Woo! Thank this you. was good. This Thank was good. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And um, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hold up. We need your support. Please like, comment, and subscribe.
And why not sharing? We're counting on you.